اوکی من یه توضیح بدم که من سطح ملودی دارم خب ملودی اولم نو هشته دوازده هشت پونزده هشت شیزده هشت بیسته یک هشت بیست و چهار هشت بیست و هفت هشت سه تا ملودی هم این طرف دارم دو هشت و ده هشت و چهار هشت من کارم میشه این من یه تایم میگون بالا دارم و ده تا کانال یه کانال نوانس هم دارم که صدای اصلی دست منه که صدا رو کل اجرا رو کمی زیاد کنم یه پروسه اینجا دارم که ریکارد میکنه صدا رو و این قسمت آگویی کشه که تغییرات متر رو توش نوشتم و اون پایینم قسمت پروسسه پروسه ای که من دارم برای این کار من چهار تا پروسه نوشتم یعنی چهار تا برنامه نوشتم تو سی سال اولی برنامه ایه که در عرض تقریبا یک دقیقه و نیم یه صدا رو از براش چی گذاشته براش یه فیلتر گذاشتم که از یه صدای خیلی موزیکال میرسه به یه صدای خیلی خوشک بعد اون از دقیقه دو شروع میشه این صدای دو بالایی ریوربه و صدای پایین دیلیه بعدا اینجا با دقیقه چهار تموم میشن و دقیقه چهار یه صدای دیلی به اون پد اصلی ترکیب میشن خب این پروسه ایه که تو کل کار اجرا میشه حالا اولش ما یه ملودی آ داریم خب ملودی آ اینجا خودش رو معرفی میکنه همین صدای زنگوله فقط صدا میده این چند بار که خودش رو معرفی کرد یه تیکش اینجا زرد میشه خب یه تیکه ده, دی ده دقیقیش ده ثانیهیش اینجا زرد میشه حالا بعدا از تقریبا ده بیست از ثانیه بیست ملودی های دیگه همشون سوار میشن همونجور که گفتم این از اینجا این B, C, D, E, A این ملودی ها همین ها هستن که اینجا نوشتن نو هشت، دوازده هشت، پونزده هشت حالا اینا کل پروسه یه پروسه ایه که توش اصل راندو هم هست یعنی از شست میرسه به دیست و هفتاد خب یعنی ما یه سری ریتم های چیز داریم ریتم های پولی متر داریم رو هم دیگه پولی متر هم خود میشه تا دقیقه ده. دقیقه دو یه عکس میشه یه میک کلن خودشون نشونده ده هشته که از خیلی چند بیف میرسه به سفر خب بعد اون این صدا که رسید حالا اون صدایی که همشون با هم دیگه سفر شدن حالا بین کانال ها پخش میشن بین کانال ها که پخش میشن هر کانال یه بار اینو اجرا میکنه این صدا اینجوری که نمیدونم تصویر من داری یا نه صدا از اون طرف تموم میشه از اون طرف میاد از اون طرف میاد و اولین بار همون آر یک خب همون آر یک استرچش رو میاد اینجا صدا میده یعنی آر یکی که 10 ثانیه بود تا 20 ثانیه استرچ میشه و اینجا پخش میشه و حالا اون صدا استرچ اونجا پخش شده و ادامه داره و حالا خود صدایی که آره خود صدای استرس شده هم زرد میشه هم موقع که پخش میشه همون صدایی که پخش میشه اینا رو ما بعدا میتونیم روش کار کنیم که بعدا مشخص بشه که چی هست دو تا پروسه ای که تو کل قضیه اتفاق میفته یکی اینکه وقتی صدا رو زرد میکنه سه تا پروسه هست یکی که وقتی صدا رو داریم مثلا مثل همین جاها صدا لوپ میشه این لوپ صدا ادامه داره دومی قضیه ای که داریم استرچ صدا هستش یعنی صداها رو تا دو بار اول کش میدیم و سومی قضیه هم اینجا نوشتم صدا کانورس میشه یعنی حالا صدا رو که زرد میکنم از ته صدا رو میخونیم یه برگرد اول یعنی مثلا وقتی یه زنگوله مثلا میزنیم کیک میره صدا میاد حالا یه صدا میاد به کیک خط میشه و آره و کل قضیه یه باری دیگه جمله آ اینجاشو نشون میده جمله سی بی اینا که ریتماشو خیلی به هم دیگه نزدیک نزدیک میشن تا دقیقه چهار باز موزیکات میشه از دقیقه چهار 
موزی خیلی دیگه اینجا دیلی شده و همشون رفتن تو هم دیگه کات میشه از اونجا صدا از صفر باز شروع میشه که به اوج میرسه توی این قضیه میاد کل صداهایی که ریورس شده کانورس شده پشت سر همدیگه قرار میگرن توی این قسمت بعد چهار دقیقه و تو اوجش بازم یه اوجی که تو دقیقه دو داریم تو دقیقه یک باز خودش رو تموم میکنم برای اینکه تو کل کار ما یه فضاهای چیز داشته باشیم که خیلی یه های عجیب غریب نباشه یه جاهای ما صدای گرفته زنگوله رو داریم که بین صداهایی که خیلی موزیکال, موزیکال کنه خود بین صدای زنگ اینا هم خودشون رو معرفی میکنن خیلی جالب شده اصلا خیلی. الان دیگه قشن مشخص دیگه قشن سکورت که میبینه هرکی قشن مشخصه که الان چه چی داره اتفاق میفته خیلی خوب حالا اینو چیز میکنه دیگه نهایت میخوا با کامپیوتر بنویسیش یعنی این آره دیگه من الان آره من الان فقط صدای چیزو دارم این صداها رو از کنم آره تو خود صداها هم یعنی تو خود ما چند تا چند تا لایه نوانس داریم این لایه از تو خود نوازنده اجرا میکنه این مثلا از بین ستا ها آره بین ستا صدایی که داریم اولش رو فورته میزن دومیش رو مثل پیانه و سیامی که مثل صدای ریز ریز هم سازه یا مثلا صدای تیموره از صرف شروع میشه به فورته بله بله و این صدا برای هر کدوم از اینا فرق میکنه یعنی من تنوی صدایی که دارم یه بار از صرف میرسه فورته از فورته میرسه به صرف خودش مثل فورته از فورته از دوتاپیه انواع صدا دارم و اینا همش توی لای نوانس گفتم که لای نوانس بعدیش رو گین اصلی که دست قضی پروسسه اونو از سلیلی صفر یک گذاشتیم صفر هیچ صدایی نیست و یک عوض صداست هیسته و هیچ وقت به یک هم نمیرسه که ما صدا رو بعدی نداشته باشیم و اینجوری یه زن داریم خیلی خوب فقط من یه پیشنهاد دارم میتونی یه خورده سفت رو بیاری پایین تر یعنی من قشت بالای سفت رو در بشتر بینم همین سفت آها آم... خب من با باز با این مدادم برگردم اگه آها میخواستم اینه مثلا اینجا اگه تو یه باکس هم اضافه کنی یعنی نوت تو بیاری همینجا آره دیگه آره تو, تو اصل قضی بعد آدم این میتونه آره. فلش بخوره این یعنی این چیزی که این ادامه داره اون وقت اینا میتونه فلش ها یه چیز باشه ممتد باشه که اینجا آره. بعد اینجا اگه سکوت داری دیگه اینجا همین باکس ها رو آره همین باکس ها رو دقیقا میخوام همونجا بذارم یعنی کامپیوتر بنیسم میگم روی نمیشد که من بنیسم همه رو اینجور فقط برای شکل گذاشتم آره خیلی خوب میشه و میتونی حالا من این صحبت رو با حامدم داشتم این تجسسونی که از صداش تو آها تو میتونی یه جدول داشته باشی روی از این تیبل های ورد استفاده کنی صفحت هم لیاوتش رو چیز کنی همین افقیش کنی لیاوت تو بعد یه تیب... این تی همین خطایی که داری اینجا تیبل بسازی روی ورد بعد اون وقت اینو پی دی اف کنی جفک بگیری ازش مثلا هر نوشته ای داری چیزی که داری تو همون خود ورد انجام بدی بقیه رو مثلا بیاری مثلا توی سیبلیوس یا مثلا چیزای دیگه بهش اضافه کنی نمیدونم حالا نه من میتونم کل اینو تو سیبلیوس بنویسم واش کی ندارم خیلی هم به ما هم یاد بده چجوری همه اینو میتونید توی چیزی نیست بنویزی حالا جلسه بعد جلسه بعد پس بعد بیاری نشون بدی که چجوری این کار رو روسی بلیوز کرد حتما حالا من یه چیز بفرم 
شما خیلی بر نکنید فکر کنم بتونم یعنی اگه کلتش رو داشته باشم فکر کنم بتونم بنویسم یعنی با همین قضیه نوتیسیش موافق هستین شما یا نه این عالیه این دقیقا همه چیش کامل کامله آره قشنگ همه چی دقیق مشخص یعنی من میبینم صدا رو میتونم بشنوم خب بریم نفر بعد کی میخواد یه جورایی خوب شد که با اعتبار هم بسید فیلم کرد ما هیچ جلسه نداشتیم واقعا بشنیم درباره کاراتون صحبت کنیم بعد الان به خصوص یه جوری شد دیگه من در بینه واقعا من چقدر هستم واسه گفتم بعد همش مهمون داریم نمیشه حالا موقعیتی شده که میشه صحبت کرد خب نفر بر کی میخواد دافتالت بشه یا من انتخاب بکنم میلاد بی بره خودت میتونی شعر کنی بچه ها من قرد شدم یا میلا قرد شده خب هست دارید میبینیم؟ آره آره میتونی خود زوم این کنی این قشنگ عرض سفر رو پر کنه آره خب حالا یه بحث خوبی که میتونه باشه غیر از شبنم که باهاش صحبت کردی به عنوان پرفومر باستا نه آوا صحبت نکردم هنم آره صحبت نکردم این جدیده یعنی کار خب آبا الان فرض کن که تو همین الان قراره اینو گذاشت جلوت میخوای اجرا کنی یعنی حالا تمرین کنی ببین که چی کار انجام میدی الان همین الان شروع کن همینجا تمرین کردن ببینیم که چقدرش رو برات روشنه چقدرش برات هنوز گنگ ممکنه باشه و اینکه اگه مشکل تکنیکی چیزی ممکنه وجود داشته باشه چی هست؟ همین الان بحث کنیم در برش باش پس یه قوطی بینز استفاده میشه که تکوم اینا ترمولا هن نه؟ یعنی مخوای مثلا اگه یه دونه چیز زدی مخوای مثلا از Shom, is there any like specific numbers like of times you want me to shake the can? Very good question. خب میلا دالان بعد جواب سوال آوارو بده. خب سوال چی بود؟ میگه که تو این علامت ترمولو که گذاشتی واسه این منظور چیه؟ تو میخوای تعداد مشخصی توی اون زمان تکون داده بشه منظور دقیقا چیه؟ نه 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 تعداد مشخص نمیخوام کاملا همونطوری که حدودی گفتم از یه شیک آروم یعنی با سرعت کم به یه سرعت زیاد میرسه یعنی که اون وسط سه تا خط گذاشتم شیک سریعتر میشه و قویتر میشه و دوباره این روند برمیگرده به اول یعنی آروم میشه تا پی پی میره پیانیسیمو بله ام چیزه ام پس اینجا باید بنویسی که نسبت سرعت نسبی میشه آقا حالا چجوری میشه به تبع انگلیسی گفت ام من همین الان خودم یادم رفته کلمشو امی نداره میفهمم خوب خب نه آخه ببین فقط تو همیشه پرفورمر نیستی تو الان برای توضیح داد همین الان خودت سوال داشتی خب پس ها بگیم که um, the rhythms 
are proportional. Proportional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any in به نوازندت میلاد هر کی که هست اینجوری بهش میرسونی که این یه چیز حدودیه خب وقتی من تایم و حدودی گفتم اون تمپو هم حدودی گفتم این مشخص نیست که حدودیه ببین تو یه کار دیگه هم که میتونی بکنی این مدل الان چیزی که تو میخوای میشه اینجوری هم نشون داد که این اصلا اینا یه خط بشه ای. چون الان من شیر نیستم خیلی خوب نشون نمیده این چی میگم این یه همچین حالتی پیدا میکنه که که این مشخصه که اینجا داری اینجا داری سریعتر انجام میدی میدونی این به دولا چنگ میرسه چلا چنگ میرسه چلا چنگ میرسه بعد کم میشه آها. من اتفاقا داشتم امروز فکر میکردم این علامت بهتر هست یا این آه. علامت که خودم نوشتم که اینا در واقع چیز دیگه تو در واقع اول نوت نویسیش اینجوریه که اول اینا رو این شکلی انجام میدی بعد اینجا رو میش کنی اینا رو خطاشو میاری پایین اینجوریه تو فیناله که اینجوری مینویسیم ما حالا نمیدونم تو سیریلیوس کنم علامتش بود آها من شنیدم سیبریوس راحت تره کلان کار کرد ولی خیلی خوب خب بریم قسمت بعد الان برای خط همینجور آبا برو جلو بعد شعان بعد اینا رو آها کنو میذارم پایین با صدای بلم واز میکنم و اوکی بچه ها مهمونمون اومد خب شما کیپ ده دیسکاشن اوکی سب کنه من قطع کنم یا باشه یو کیپ ات Uh, hi David, I can't see you really well. Oh, okay. But so we started talking about the pieces. So now we are talking about Milad's um, piece, that kitchen, that he he's working with Ava. Then uh, Ava is so now we are having the performer composer discussion about the pieces that, um, for example, when we have Ava practicing this piece, what would be the issues to deal with when like reading this piece? Um, I hope you can hear us, right? Yeah, I, um, can you hear me now? Is this, this yeah. Is, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Give me one moment here. Okay. Well, did you, did you get a chance to, um, I'm sorry. I, my computer is like acting a bit funny. Um, So we will continue the discussion and um, yeah. how about that you will join the discussion whenever you feel comfortable. Um, so should I continue in English? Yes. Okay. So I, to my understanding, then I would uh, put the can of beans down <laughs> it with a way that would make a loud noise and then Uh, what would I throw on the table? Like, should I throw the beans on the table? Mila, do you have any questions? No. Now, I have a question that I have to put it on the table or I have to put it on the 
پخششو کنم روی میز Is that right? Yeah uh, تو سومی uh, دومی خب دومی اصلا uh, چیزی رو پخش نمی کنی فقط بوتی رو باز که باز میکنی و در پوشش رو میندازی روی میز تا صداش قطع بشه Okay. In the third act, right? Take beans with one hand and pour slowly into the plate. From five centimeters to thirty centimeters. Okay. And then act four, uh, I would take the plate and then use my hand, use my fingers to like push them back and forth with that rhythm, right? Yes. Okay. And then return the beans to the can. Okay. Okay, cool. So, um, and then, okay, go up, go up a little bit. No, no, I want to see that um, singing line and uh, that, um, that rhythm again. Mm -hmm. Okay. David, do you have any suggestion for this part? Yes, yes. So um, I think that this is a very uh, cool idea in the way that it's kind of unfolding. Um, okay. The one thing that I, I see and that you're getting from your performer as well is that it's um, a sense of uh, that you want their input on how to best create your music. And uh, I'm a big fan of text, to be honest. So I'm, I'm like very happy to see that you're using text in your scores. Um, but I think you can go even farther. And I think you can go even farther because of the questions that you're getting from your performer in particular, right? Um, because the way or the questions that they're asking me about how they can interact and really create the piece is is the instructions are there. They're a bit vague, perhaps, um, like in how the manner is supposed to be. And so I, maybe a, a question would be uh, for you is, uh, mm -hmm. is uh, how do you want the performer to be doing these things? Um, if they are to be doing the certain uh, rhythms and notes uh, with, music if they're mm -hmm. having an action right like return the beans uh to so you can even pour them on the table like in what way should they do it angry should they do it uh peacefully should they do it very slow very quick very normal these are all ways that um these actions because you have sonic and visual actions that are going on that can be uh dictated even more i think i think you can expand upon what you've given us, um, if you want to go that far. If not, make it, uh, make it a thought rather than an action or a question about how you can, uh, as a performer, take these acts and realize them. I, I think I need to translate later a bit for Milad. Then Milad, what have I just said? That Alan David should go for his. Bachshi should go for his. I don't know how much. Um, خب ببین هر کدی دیوید الان بتونه که باز همی بحثی که داشتیم. اینکه چجوری دقیقا برای نوازنده مشخص کنی که اینو چجوری قرارش رو بشه حالا جدا از خود پیمان حتما جدا از خود همین نوانس هایی که گذاشتی با چه حالتی داره و خود حالا اکت چون همه بحثی که داشتیم قطعه توی خود خیلی حالت تیاتریکال هم میتونه داشته باشه همین حالا با چه حسی عصبانی یه اینکه خسته است حالا هر حسی که داره بعضی جاها نوشتمش ولی خواستم چون خلاصه و مفید بنویسن هم میذاره کوتاه شده مثل همین فیلم کنم اینا رو جدا کنم اکس رو ببرم توی یه صفحه دیگه یعنی 
تو توضیحات رو برم تو یه صفحه دیگه که بتونم قابل تر بگم انگلیسی بگو so he, he, uh, David he is saying that he, he is, well the, the, the general thing is that still students are working on their pieces until the like September 5 to finish the pieces and uh, he's um, planning to move all these texts to another like instruction page and um, but like yeah we also uh, we are looks, um, like also having this discussion that his uh, piece has like the potential to be like theatrical and um, what would be the uh, like the feelings of the, and emotions that the performer should present when when performing this piece right yeah i i, I couldn't agree more and um i'm actually really looking forward to seeing this uh in its in its completed version soon because i think these ideas are great yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you okay if there's n yeah. any continue or mm -hmm. and... yeah can you can you zoom out a little bit so we can also see the kind of full page aha uh -huh. and how about the next page uh, mm -hmm. it's not finished okay okay so it's, it seems that it's gonna be the mixture of text and like conventional sort of notation right uh yes okay like if david has any suggestion about that like um sorry yeah um no i, I really like the idea of it mixing um some i i'm thinking about this as a performer um and nasim jump in and tell me to like hold on a moment if i go too far or if any of this is making sense anyone just tell me to stop because i will go on for a while but uh in regards to to how this is being presented something and this is going back a little bit to what i was saying earlier is how you you know uh setting the mind frame of the performer can be super helpful and um something that i'm fond of when composers do is they give me a page of notes to really better understand the piece of music and through reading that i can get an understanding of the composer's mind um, and what they actually see for this piece or how the piece was created and in reading that and in, and trying to well in understanding that uh, i feel that i'm able to really convey the best picture I can as a performer without having the composer there. So um, I, I, I think, uh, you know, the route that you're going is great. Um, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's forming. But these are things as you progress um, can be helpful to your performer as well. Um, so I give it a little bit translation میلاد الان متوجه شدی که چی گفت بهت یا اینکه ترجمه کنم لطفاً لطفاً ترجمه میگه که به عنوان یک پرفورمر انتظار دارم که به آهنگساز یک جوری قطعه رو برای من بنویسه که من بدون اینکه نیاز داشته باشم با خود آهنگساز حرف بزنم سوال ازش بپرسم همه اون چیزی که تو ذهن آهنگساز هست رو من توی همین کاغذ بتونم بهش دسترسی داشته باشم هز حالا این حس قطعه گرفته اینکه چرا این کار کرده و که من بتونم قطعه رو تمام و کمال اجراش بکنم یعنی واقعا همون چیزی که تو ذهن آهنگساز هست دقیقا اجرا بشه مرسی Thanks to David so much for joining us and these wonderful comments. Of course, of course. <laughs>
Um, I think we should uh, move on to the next person. Um, so we're going out of um, order today. So I think next person uh, would be great that if Hamid will uh, present his work if he can or Shabna. سلام خدمت دیوید عزیز شبنم من, من باید شروع کنم یا شبنم توضیح بده کارم یا خدا توضیح بدم حامد بعد اگرم میتونی انگلیسی صحبت کن او مای گاد حامد let me share my work Okay, uh, I, I will help you with the description. So, as you might know, David, that Hamid is writing for a bookshelf. That mm -hmm. all the music idea, like, is just yes, based yes. on the bookshelf. And um, now he's working on the notation system. That I think it is specifically in this step, you can give really, really good comments. I really love this step, and I think it is uh, one of the most fun and creative parts about being a composer. Mm -hmm. Okay, here is my score. Um, Taksim Kardan Chimishot, Bariyashom Miram Tatayish. I dividing uh, my uh, notes to to that's the Jimmy shot. Two groups. <laughs> Two groups. Uh, so one the, to five the, number of books are in the bottom, and then six to ten uh, number of books are on the. And the um, number one uh, to five are for uh, left hand and six to ten for right hand and the middle line is timeline for my work. Uh, this sign shows the vibration with uh, the book number seven um, and this sign show um, the attack attack of uh, the books number seven uh, to the uh, floor of bookshelf. Uh, this sign showed the nail that you uh, like nail, you're doing nail it with nail the nail to, oh, the nail beat uh, Mm -hmm. uh, the nail beads to the uh, box and some of uh, another signs and articulation. Mm -hmm. And then how would it be this uh, like a kind of chord uh, moment of the nail attacks? No, no, that attacks of the books. So you're like uh, doing the like six books together, mm -hmm. attacking the next page. page. Two. Yeah, are are you doing the like six books together, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and it's in just the like first minute of the piece. Oh, I'm sure that David can now give you a lot of great comments. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I really um, enjoy this. I really enjoy uh, seeing it and then seeing uh, what, what I'm supposed to hear from this. Um, I think it's very, very um, clean in a lot of ways. I really love the way the timeline is done at the middle point. Um, I usually put it on the top and I always have this 
uh, giant question if I'm doing the right thing for my performers. Um, and maybe I'll start doing it in the middle like this. Um, it's very, very nice. So I have some uh, kind of some similar questions or comments from before. And maybe I'm missing a page here. You'll have to forgive me. But again, just like a page of notes um, in regards to the graphics that you've used. None of them are um, too out there mm -hmm. or too uh, outside of the convention, so to say. Um, but I want to know what they mean for you. Like if we look, for instance, in the very bottom line in the first three-ish measures, we have this squiggle and then, uh, and then it gets wider and then it returns. And so I, I, uh, I and maybe it's in here and I, I tried looking on the, on the drive, uh, but, but having this for them, so that way, um, you know, you as the composer are kind of free to then just really see how the musicians are interpreting the work. Um, okay, so now just saying this, because again, as a performer, th these are things that I personally look at. The composition itself, can we zoom out? Is that possible? And also, do you have any uh, questions about those comments I just said? Safiya instruction to me to Um yeah, he's asking about the definition. Just let me for a second. In Alamata, how could you change it? I guess I have instructions. So, I mean, the Farsi name is Shamina, or Alam Shirnu, Kona. We should all talk about that. Alright. Alam Shirnu, Kona, but. And then we just have like uh, 15 minutes left, then there will be like maybe. And it's hope and Sarakish as the Amadena should the value hope in our hollow dust and the show. So it's not, um, I'm translating for you, David. So this is not the like final instruction page, but this is like a sketch that how the instruction page will be, but it will be in English at the end. So these are the signs and the definitions that okay, awesome. Okay, thank you. That was the that was the only thing. So then, um, as far as the thing, I appreciate this. I think this is like um, it's calming as a performer, just because um, I didn't see it. And maybe um, as you go along, start thinking about um, like the the types of books, right? As well, like. Are there directions for the types of books that we should be getting? Should they be, be hard cover? Should they be soft cover? Should they be thick? Should they be thin? Are they to be certain notes, like higher and lower? Um, and this can be done using the, the stave system that you've, you've already used in the score. Um, but include these kinds of thoughts that you have, even if they're in the most sketchy, like primordial phase of becoming a, what the piece will be, mm -hmm. um, allow for these types of areas of your musical language to come through, to come through and allow, um, allow your piece to truly be yours because, um, you know, I, I see, I would see these lines in the score and, and maybe think, okay, are these supposed to be actual notes? You've not written a clef, but the musical history of it all would say that that's a system with notes on it. Um, and so as you uh, continue to define the piece, um, look for these areas where you can come through and say, ah, this is something that I've discovered with this bookshelf or with books that I would really love the music to continue to explore in that way. And I think that's the only uh, uh, clarity thing that I can think of. Cool. Hamed, um, 
یا متوجه شدم آره اگه فقط مفهوم کلی رو فهمیدم ولی آره سوالی چیزی لاز... سوالی آره چیزی که نبود توش حالا اینکه چه جوری بت... همین دیگه حالا دیگه مثلا درگیری این بشه که خود کتاب خونه حالا چقدر ایده موزیکال به تمیز میده چه جوری تو میخواد شیر کنی یا اینکه اگه خودت شیر کنی Um, David, is it okay that we go for your presentation in like 10 minutes or you would like to like keep going? How would you like to no, like, I think have this video? I think, I think we can take that time. Okay. Shabnam, you have to share the video after the video. I don't know. نه فایل تو بعد نشون بدی کنم که فقط بدیم فایل رو نشون بدیم اوکی بذار من شیر می کنم وقت رو میگه بذار من نشون میدم اوکی Does everybody see? Yes. Okay. خب شبنم میتونی توضیح بدی من برای ترجمه کنم. خب خب من میگم که برای ستار نشون میشن که از دلنشو پشت خرک. Oh, can you can you show ستار as well? Um, So, David, this is for an Iranian traditional instrument called setar, which is like this. So it has four strings and very, the strings are so super thin and soft, but mm. metal. Okay, okay, awesome. And so this is like a piece for solo. for solo setar and um, so you you um, she also has the instruction page but it's not attached to this <laughs> like most of them are like that so we are working on both parts alongside and then they, we will be finished at the end yeah um, I but I believe me I know it's it's uh, getting everything together is always the hardest part so don't worry <laughs> oh, yeah. everyone <laughs> so okay and then um so this will be the yeah the top part the top line is for the body the bottom line is for the like actual like playing on the strings on the fingerboard right uh, so Okay, so the right hand is on the top, left hand is on the bottom. Shabna. Okay. And um, what else you want to say? Like the numbers, and how do you define the numbers and like the rest? I mean, I don't know if it's a woman. That's the, that we can show what I say. But I don't know if it's a woman. That's the chat. I don't know if it's a woman. 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 <laughs> okay, so um, David, these zeros are for the thumb on the le like left hand thumb, and the threes with the L one is the like the third finger from the left hand, 
but I don't see any threes without L. Do you have any three without L that would be the like third finger of the right hand, right? Shabna. In just to say, but say, but I'm that's the last time, do you know? No, no, that's it. Okay, so that's the only like that's only the left hand. David, do you have any question or you want to hear some parts of this? Actually, yeah, I wouldn't mind hearing it. I think that um, that would be nice. I also really want to hear this instrument. Shabnam, pas man screen share ro qat mikonam ke betonam tasvir to bozorg dashte bashan. Bad dobare miyaram ro screen share ke betoni ye bakhsh ad qaitat ro bezani. Doroste? Okay. Pas az mute am dar bi. So that was the first part of the piece and then there are also some parts that she will play behind the bridge in the second part of the piece. Okay, all right. Um, uh, a few things. Thank you for playing that. That was great. Um, that really like made my day to hear something other than the loud instrument that I play every day. Um, and I think your playing is beautiful. I think this piece is actually really great. Um, I think it's 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 on to something. Um, I I don't want to give you too much because I feel like your musical intuition is quite strong. Um, and what I mean by that is you, how you are expressing what you hear in your head to the paper and then to train to be translated into music is very, very good. Um, and I think that, um, well, let me ask two questions. Um, will you be performing this is my first question. And um. The thing is that, so she's writing for Paymon. Oh, ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so that answers that one, I guess. And then the second question is in regards to the tempo. Um, and it's just something to observe in the way the piece is and i think it's more something something to think about than to take uh in any way as you know a good or a bad thing i think this is that question that can help you really define the pieces is what how fast is this really going to be and i i ask this question um because on one end of the spectrum, on the slower side, if I were to hear this piece quite slow to my ears, maybe half as fast as you played, I would almost 
feel as if I'm falling into a meditation, right? Like a trance-like state because of the way the notes are repeating. And I love this idea. I think that's like just a key moment of what this musical voice is coming out to say. Or should it be much faster, right? Should it be not um, frantic, but um, giving urgency, I think, is, is a better way uh, of, of putting it. Um, but these are the two things in regards to tempo. Uh, I, I think you should maybe think about it because it's going to have a, a huge bit on the piece. And the reason I'm saying this, the reason I'm saying this is, um, and maybe it's not quite up to tempo, uh, but I think that was around 60, is um, how much space or empty space or soft space is is there and so maybe this is another question is uh, how much empty air is supposed to be there because again if i'm thinking of this uh meditative slower tempo that air is much needed right but if it's at a fast tempo that air gives space for uh pushing forward for like a drive uh, and so th these are the only two things, well, this is the main thing that I can think, uh, I can suggest that you think about, or if you have an answer, then awesome. Wow, I, I want to translate this, this part was so cool. میگه که اولا که خب خیلی از قطعه تعریف کرد و اینا میگه که خیلی کلا نمیخواد ساختار قطعه رو به هم بریزه همین جوری که هست خیلی شخصیت خوبی داره و هم میخواد بگه که به این فکر کنی که اگه بخواد قطعه خیلی کند تر از این باشه چه حسی میده و چقدر اونجا نیاز داری که تو نفس داشته باشی بین صداها فضای خالی باشه که فقط حالا اون رزونانس کارت باشه یا اگه قطعت خیلی بخواد سریع تر باشه چه حسی بهت میده و حالا یه چیزی هم من اضافه کنم که اگه تو بخوای این تغییرات تمپو رو داشته باشی که مثلا بازی باز فضای سرعت قطعت داشته باشی باز چقدر میتونی توش مانوف بدی و چقدر اصلا اینا به قابلیت میده که روش اینا چیزه که روش فکر کنی دیگه که دقیقا سرعت قیطت میخوای چی باشه میچون به حال این که الان دقیقا اینجوری نیستش که سیاه برابر شست یه چیز حوالیه و تو این حوالیه چقدر میتونه رنج بزرگ داشته باشه چقدر محدود میخوای باشه اینا هم به چیزه میتونه باشه که روش فکر کنی Awesome. Really good conversation. <laughs> Thank you. Dave. Okay, so. Of course, of course. I think I, I'm I'm really looking forward to this um, when it when it comes closer to time. Awesome. So, I would like to ask you again, David. So this is like um, ten here, ten two. Um, how would you like to continue the meeting? Are you ready to present? Um, or yeah. you would like to keep going? My, my, little, my little shtick here. And then, um, are you going to give me like a screen shareness, Nassim? Is that how it's going to work? or? Yeah, you should be able to do that already. Okay, perfect. Um, maybe I'll just, uh, let me, I need to pull up this last thing. So just give me one second. It's just okay. one video. I'm like nearly there and then we can I think, begin. Just... Okay. So how about we um, look at one more piece and then, um, or if it's just No, I, I've got it. I've got it. Okay. okay. Cool. All right. So in, in, in looking and hearing at your, uh, all of your pieces so far, it, it gave me some ideas of things that I've done as well as things that I've seen 
uh, that have helped me as a performer and as a composer. Um, and I, I use these examples because I think that they're um, as honest as I can as as I can make them. Um, then I think that they play off what you all are doing. And so, uh, what I would like to show is uh, a score of this piece. Let me just make sure I get the final, final, final version. Here it is. There we go. So the first piece, and how do I do this now? Sorry, I haven't zoomed in a while. How do I screen share? There is it. Terrific. Okay, so this first piece, and let me zoom in ha, 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 a bit for everyone. Um, is for trumpet and electronics. And this was a commission piece by a friend who had heard the work that I was doing with electronics and uh, wanted something that, a piece that would let him explore that because he wasn't really into it so much. And so this piece, while the first two pages are uh, pretty normal looking, for the most part, you know, it says COM C, uh, 30 seconds. Can you see my mouse cursor all right? Yeah, we can see that. Perfect. And then uh, I've written, you know, that it's, it's normal music with some alternate fingerings for trumpet, right? I'm saying play this note with the third one, play this note with the third one, and so forth. Um, there are certain moments where the electronic musician is actually changing uh, part of the electronics. And so it's like a duet. And as we get through each section, right, this one is calm C, deep ocean, there's an improvised transition. And what I've done in the score is I've given, and maybe we can find it, uh, a list of notes for the performer at the end. I'll bring that up in just a moment. And as we get to the second page, the notation takes a, a different approach. It's more graphic. And each of these symbols, I've used a defined sound. So I think that the, be the beginning is beautiful. What I'll, I'll play a little bit of the beginning. And then what I'll do is I'll skip to around here, just to give you all some sound references of my work.
I'm just gonna fast forward a bit. I don't want to, I'll, I'll leave the rest for your uh, moments when you want to explore that. Uh, so let me pull up this score again. Here it is. And That was also, where did you perform this piece? Uh, so I did this at CalArts. That was at CalArts during my master's. Um, and it was a collaboration between uh, Ethan, who commissioned the piece, and my uh, friend Blaine, who did live projections. And Blaine and I collaborated. Uh, we're really good friends, so I kind of told him just uh, some general ideas of what I was looking for in the piece. And he came back and showed me some ideas, and we just he, he was very, very close to what I had imagined. And then it was just uh, kind of refining from there. Um, and so let me go into this piece too, uh, because I think that this piece, in, in terms of me presenting this piece, um, the, the thing that I want to say about it is that there was um, like full intent and um, like clarity of what I wanted to be saying in this. And as you um, fall into your composing shoes more and more, you're going to have those pieces, right? And be so proud of them. Um, and like, this is one for me because I felt like uh, when I put, when I wrote this piece, this was like, ah, I finally feel like I'm falling into my shoes. You know where I belong, um, and you can see that in the notation, right? We have the normal, and then down here we have the abnormal and the not. Oh, we can't see the score at the moment. The oh, okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Ah, yeah. How do I do the whole screen? I guess I don't. Um. There we go. Uh, so yeah, the, the top part is rather normal standard notation, except for the, uh, uh, well, it's fairly normal. There's some accelerando there. But this stuff here is all um, representative of like trumpet extended techniques. And I think all of you are doing a wonderful job of creating diverse and unique sounds for yourself which uh, gets to my next um, uh, my next score ah uh, yes here it is so I'll probably bring up a few of these um, so a composer who I've very much been uh, interested in their work is the work of Karl Heinz Stockhausen. Uh, he was this German composer who uh, was a contemporary composer. He died in 2007 and he wrote over 100 works that um, I would say for as a trumpet player they are considered repertoire and uh, standard music that should be played by these instruments. And um, I think it's a great fortune to have a composer like this who's, who's doing that. But at the same time, while they are like uh, uh, authentic and very true to what they're imagining, he wasn't afraid to take um, chances. And what I mean by that is I mean, it's not so much a chance anymore, but taking a text score. And I bring this one up um, because of 
uh, a recording that I did. I did this on a recital, and I've got a uh, recording that I'll, I, can, I can maybe play in a moment. Um, but this piece is just so simple. And I think that the simplicity of it is what allows beauty um, and, and expansion. And I think this is going to what I was saying earlier about giving your performer instructions that are to be interpreted in a certain aspect, right? And if we see here, it just, we see this title and we see this line that goes up and down. And already I'm getting, without reading the instructions, an image of what I could be doing. Um, and so then of course he says, play a sound with the certainty that you will have an infinite amount of time and space. And uh, you know, this is just a Stockhausen way of getting you to really think about what you're listening. And I, I truly love that about his music. Um, what I'll do is, because this is a recording that's um, uh, kind of static, and I, I think maybe I'll send the recording of this piece. But at the same time, I want to show uh, just two other pieces um, and then maybe have like a conversation about this and how I got to this, if you all have questions. Uh, the next piece going off of Stockhausen, if that was the simplest version of things, this is a complex version in a certain way. And again, in kind of seeing your all, all of yours music and what you're doing. Um, I won't try to explain all of this piece. What I will draw your attention to in this piece is the amount of creativity that is in um, presenting the music or trying to tell the performer how to think about the music. And if I'm to boil down and bring the music to the most simplest form, which is actually this piece here. It's just a series of minus signs and plus signs and maybe some equal signs strewn about, yeah. And the idea of what is going on here, and I'll come back to Olay um, and Expo, is that you take an, a, a parameter of music and what I mean by that is how loud or how low, how loud or how soft, how long or how short, or how many or how few. And the performer, if in the previous piece, you had full choice of what to bring to the table because of a, a prompt, this one is a asking for that in a, in a more set framework, right, of what this is. And I, as my draw to this music is the fact that it is a bit improvisatory. It is a bit, um, well, it is very experimental. Um, it's asking me as a performer to bring something else to, to the table other than just reading the notes. Um, it asks me to take chances. And uh, for myself, someone who improvises, I love this, right? It, it presents something that if I were to, and I'll go back just a few scores. Um, where's my trumpet folder here? Ah, here we go. If this is just another Stockhausen piece that is written, you can see that it's very standard. And there's nothing wrong about this. This is the world that I'm living in. Um, and this is the world that I think is influencing me the most um, in how I try to convey my music. And um, let me just say this to the, the, the pieces that I'm showing were written before I discovered this. Um, and it only helped me, uh, the music of Stockhausen, the music of other composers, helped me really 
um, codify my, my music. And so let me see, I think I've got, ah, uh, yeah. This uh, piece here, I think this will be the last one that I present, and we can actually listen to this one, um, is for brass and percussion. And the one thing that I had been extremely curious about was space at this time in music. And what I mean by that is the physical space, um, which is something that I continued to explore. And also the diversity of, of sounds and effects that we can get through space. Um, okay, this score, brass and percussion, I decided that the best way to convey it would be through text. And I'll just kind of run through this piece before I scroll down. The whole idea is to take three concepts, three ideas. And through these ideas and visions, I explore and exploit them in a creative sense. And what, by, what I mean by that is, for instance, in the first section, there is a, a Doppler effect, which is as sound gets closer, and you can hear this as like um, emergency vehicles like pass by, but it gets higher and then gets lower. And so for the first part, I wanted to explore that by having the musicians move and pivot and uh, kind of go throughout the space. The second one, the second section of the piece, I wanted to explore um, very close sounds that were noise based. And I don't mean noise in a sense of uh, um, harsh sound, but I mean noise in the sense of like wind and how close can someone get to an audience member blowing air through their instrument. Um, and having the audience hear that. How close can that be? Um, and then the final section was how much sound can I fill a space with? And how much of that um, can the audience absorb and add to the instrument that is the room? Now, these are the things I was thinking about when writing the music, but they're not necessarily conveyed in the score. Uh, these is just, this is just a, a graphic of the instruments and the people. Uh, yes, there's some fans. And then some notes. Um, I'll attach all of this music in a, in a dry folder so that way you can both listen and hear. So that way I don't waste too much time because I think uh, having a conversation would be nice about all of this. And here is the most part of the score, and I know it's sideways, I do apologize. But you'll see that even at this point, I was exploring with graphics and simplicity or minimalism in a way of what's happening. And if we get to the true score, here we are with a text setup for everyone, a graphic of the positions of the folks, and then how the action is to happen over time. So this is the starting position. Here's a list of directions. And after those directions, you should be in the next position. And this goes on for each of the sections, right? Um, and as that goes on, I explore those three concepts that I had mentioned earlier. And so in, and I'm going to stop sharing now, but uh, uh, the, these are things that I've seen in your pieces so far that I've experienced in mine that I liked, would like to share. Actually, there's a, uh, oh, that, that is it. But I do want to kind of leave open time if you want to ask me questions about my music that you saw or the music that I shared that, um, that you're curious about in terms of how I interpret it, how I envision performing it, how I envision composing this music, how the process is for creating some of this work or preparing to perform this work. Um, but I just want to leave that open now because I think it's important that, that we have this. We don't hear you now.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm, yeah. If, if anyone wants to have a question or 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 want to uh, have a conversation, let's let's take the time now. I think and and do that. So I don't know if anyone has a question for me or about a specific piece. بچه ها سوالی اگه دارین اینجا وقتشه که بپرسین No is everyone shy? Don't be shy. You can you can tear me. Uh, hi David. Uh, we are so glad to have you there. Yes, yeah, super happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, do you start with us any uh, source for uh, learning about the uh, extended technique or especially for the uh, microtone intervals? Uh, you said, is there a specific technique? Uh, the in the um, microtone intervals, because you know our music, uh, my music in Middle East, it is, uh, Full up uh, the microtone intervals, and uh, I think it is be so useful for us to know them. Yeah, I and I think that it's it's a it's a it's a part of the musical language that I'm so happy is like actually getting explored more. Um, there's a one bunch of wonderful composers who are doing this. Um, Mark Sabat, who's in Berlin. Uh, Wolfgang von Schwartz, who's in, um, who's at CalArts. These uh, composers and performers, there's, I have a friend who's in a group, Ensemble Music Fabrique, uh, which is in Cologne, and she plays just intonation music. Um, so, okay, but to, anyway, these are things that I, I'm so happy that, that you bring this up, that uh, we do this, but uh, as far as the execution, because I think this may be the, where you're going. When, when I heard this in the piece, right, those microtones, uh, I heard that as a flourish. I heard that as um, uh, not necessarily an extended technique, but what the music was asking for, right? And um, I think that uh, it's very easy for all of us to get in our heads about what we're doing. And sometimes having the music guide us is the best way. And to tell you the truth, that's how I found that. That was a pure accident. Um, I was improvising and I found that microtone on the trumpet by accident through an improvisation. Not that I didn't know about it, but it's something that I had never explored or put in that context. And I will say that if you're looking to explore these techniques or extended techniques, and as one of my teachers would say that we're at a point where old ideas of what extended techniques were are now part of the canon of musical techniques for our instruments. Um, there are ones that are pushing, but the old ones are here and part of the canon. Um, but working with your performers, right? And saying like, I have this sound in my head, right? I hear it, let me maybe sing it for you. And um, by singing this for you, maybe the performer will get an idea of how to convey this music. And um, a story that was just told to me uh, by, one, by a mentor of mine um, at the new year was about Stockhausen. And in my mind, he had slaved over this work, all of his works for months and maybe even years to write them. And my mentor said, no, in fact, he wrote them very quickly. He wrote them very, very quickly to get them out. But then what he did afterwards was he workshopped them for a long time with the performers to convey his musical idea to the best he could. Um, and to go back to this piece 
And to go back to how that piece in particular came to be, right, because it was a commission, I took all the things that I was interested in, which was kind of telling this narrative story with intent to tell something with electronics, to tell something that wound up using extended techniques, but always having Ethan, the person who I was writing it for, and what their sound world. When I imagined this being played, I imagined Ethan being Ethan playing it and what he would sound like and what he would do because this is his piece at the end of the day. Um, and I think that's the beauty of collaboration, right? Uh, I don't know if these answer your questions fully, but I think they're, they're thoughts that I had along the way. Excellent. Did I answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, uh, in the re uh, recent days, I uh, speak with you, and I never thought in my uh, my idea that food can play the microtone uh, tones. Uh, certainly, like that one that I want to uh, hear from a flute but it's just the fingering um, and i found some fingering that i brought it in my pieces that uh, the performer can use that for its play and i just want to know is there any any fingering for me but i i can't uh, imagine what's occur in playing an instrument to play that just I uh, need about some guidance to find it and uh, and uh, keep it in my score to tell my performance to do it. Uh, I just want some uh, PDF or books about this about this idea. Um, David, let me give you some. Um... Um, image of the situation of these students. So these students that you see here, they barely see instruments, specifically brass players, like in person. And um, in general situation, they don't have zero, like any access to performers. So they are like super thirsty to just see what is happening like on trumpet how does it sound like if you could uh, perform something that we can see on your trumpet it would be fantastic yeah absolutely let me just um let me let me because I, I think before i do that let me just say one thing because i think this kind of answers the question um and then i think also this will also answer the question um The question that you're asking is the most beautiful question that I, that I think one could ask. And that question is why? And I, I, I had to learn asking this question. And um, it's, it's very dear to me. Uh, I say this because um, through going to these courses the, the, uh, that I've, I've gone, they have themes. And one of them was learning to ask why. And learning to ask why is exactly what you're saying. If I'm curious about something, I need to ask someone about it. I want to learn more about this. And if my, the answer I get, which is good, but doesn't fulfill me, I want to keep asking why, and I'm going to ask the next person I can, why, right? And in regards to this, you need to be asking why to your flute players. And when you, like all the flute players that you know, all the flute players that you can find on Facebook that are in contemporary music, hey, I'm, I'm really interested in writing for flute. I'm, I'm, I'm rather new to this, but I have some ideas. Can you point me in a direction where I can explore the flute in this way, right? Do you have recommendations for music? Do you have recommendations for books that I can read? that I can listen to. These are the things that are the resources that you can pull from your musicians from, and always. And um, uh, 
in, in using these resources, right, uh, you will get a deeper understanding of the music. And not only that, but the music that will begin to be written by all of you will reflect that, will reflect the future of what music is going. And I think that's the beauty of it. And, you know, as you said, we're finally getting into the microtonal world in, in this, this part of music, you know, and I think it's great. And we're finally there because we've been missing this. Um, but there's so much more. And, and as I'll get to, there's a lot of language on the trumpet that I look forward to each day in discovering. But uh, yeah, the best thing I can say is continue to do what you're doing by asking why and finding resources and deeper answers to the questions that you're asking. Um, so uh, maybe Nassim, if it's okay, maybe we can, because uh, I have to get my trumpet out and I also have to like uh, just drink some water. Maybe we go on to the next person and talk while I do this. Mm -hmm. and is that okay? And then, and then I'll play maybe after their presentation. Yeah, that would be great. Um, it might like take longer than half an hour. Uh, that, is that, would it be fine for like- That's perfectly fine. I think that'll and be- And the rest, I would be with the rest of the people. But uh, maybe we can just uh, see one more piece. Who didn't present today? Ava, yep. Can you share your score? And... Yes. Um, can I give like a background of it first? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, hi, I'm Ava, I'm 15, nice to meet you. Um, I was inspired to write my piece by the droplets of water from my, from my uh, sink, dropping to my sink from my faucet. And it t in my opinion, I think there is a mood and beat to the um, droplets of water that although it's interchangeable, it's still sustained in a way. And I wanted to form a composition to speak to that, as well as to show an image of the droplets going further and further down the drain. Um, I wanted to capture the imagery um, and into my music to, um, sh to fully like uh, show the um, audience what I wanted to um, portray in my music. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now. <laughs> uh, can you see this? Yes. Okay, so um, th there's the downwards incline of where my notes are going is the portrayal of the do droplets direction. And then um, the portato of my instruments um, are to accent the sound that the water drop make when they hit the sink. Um, and as the example below can show. And then um, in addition, I included a motion that the guitarist's uh, foot can make, um, producing a light or short sound to both exemplify the um, drop the droplet sound that what they make when they hit the sink and also to have a stronger effect on my audience perspective of the piece and then the following symbols um shown are to appear in the rhythmic section that i just talked about um and they mean different things for example if when you see like a triangle in the rhythmic section it means light foot taps but if it's a square that appears it means a slight sliding motion of the foot so it's like sounds something like this but on the floor <laughs> um and then this is my score uh should i play a section like of the my recorded thing or oh i would love that okay um the um part of the foot taps isn't available because i it's a very recent um idea that i had and included and it was after the guitarist had already performed their part so uh, no. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, it's not working. <laughs> Maybe try exiting out of just that little player and try again. Yeah, sometimes. Oh. There we go. Ah. خب حالا میخواید درباره همین جایی که هست حالا باش. صحبت کنیم که sure, yeah. Since it's not working uh, <laughs> Do you have any uh, thoughts or criticisms? Oh, you know, I always have a lot of thoughts <laughs> Criticisms uh, I, You know, I don't think so um, Let me uh, it, well, it's very clear that you had a, uh, a trajectory in mind. You knew exactly what you wanted. Um, you, it, 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 it also seems very clear that you, um, you knew what you knew uh, with extreme precision to what extent things are going to be occurring, and uh, and. It's reflected in the notes, in the symbols, and in the score. Um, to be honest, I, 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 I don't know. I would really like to hear the recording. I'm sure, you know, maybe we, we if we can, because I, I'm curious to listen to it, because I think that it's, for me, I, I think that would be the most helpful. Mm -hmm. um, to get a better idea of the piece. I might be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So let me let me finish this. Um, okay. It's always a tricky thing sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's, sometimes it wants to, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, technology is unpredictable. <laughs> So, Ava, if you can stop sharing. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay. Ah, oh, here it is. Okay. Here it goes. Okay. So, I will just share the sound. I think it will really work better this way. And let's see. Okay, here we go. Awesome. Thank you to your performers too. They did wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I, I only have questions for you to think about. I don't really, I, I think they're, 
the piece sounds really good. I like how there's an A and a B section. I like the dialogue between the piano and the guitar. Thank you. Uh, oh, uh, oh yeah, of course. Uh, so the, the next, the, the, the things to think about in this piece um, are how you're filling up the, the sound spectrum. Mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is the lowest sounds to the highest sounds. Mm. More specifically, the left hand of the piano. Right. It's, it's sitting there in that chord inversion, which mm. I, it sounds like root position. And it's sitting in that same range. However, the music changes moods a few times. So I'm curious how the left hand can reflect that. And I right. think one, one really good example that I can bring to everyone's attention is that in the B section of the piece, before it comes back to the A again, there is a moment in the left hand that switches between long notes and short notes. And I don't know if this was something that's, because uh, I wasn't looking at the score, that's in the score or was something done by the performer. But this, this is a magical moment. It's a magical moment because of the fact that it's, it's sending a drive and urgency to the music. And I think because it's placed in the B section, it gives that development, that compos uh, compositional development of this thing that we've heard in the, the whole A section. Given that, how much farther can you explore that left hand? I think the right hand is good. I think the guitar is good. But I'm curious how it can fill. Because you have these, uh, again, to bring to the B section, you have these little melodies and then these that are statements and then there's uh, restatements by the other instrument. Right? And I'm not, I think that's a beautiful thing that happens in the B section. But in the A section, um, after you've given us our first taste of everything and it's still going and it's getting towards that B section, what can that left hand do? Right? How can it go even farther? Um, and I just say that because to my ear, it's very uh, samey, if I'm going to say that. Not that it's a bad thing, but it's, it's, it's just kerplunking away. Uh, and I'm curious what else can happen. Because mm. the rest of the writing is, is very good. Um, and the other thing with that is uh, distinguishing ranges of the instruments. I think that's the other thing that can be uh, played with as well. Mm -hmm. um, and what I mean by that is like uh, the guitar and the piano seem to be in the similar range almost. And yeah. that makes great moments when, when you want that combined color. But what happens if you switch in the B section, which sounds a bit darker, to give the guitar down an octave or so, mm -hmm. right? To really get it rich or to try to get as many open strings as possible because that's mm -hmm. gonna give you the, the most beautiful sound that you can from the guitar. Um, and so these are things to just more so orchestrationally to think about. Compositionally, I think the composition is fine. I wanna see what you can do with the orchestration of the piece now. How much can you push it? Uh, because the ideas are already on the paper. Right. Push, now that you can reflect, where can you go? Thank you. Very, very, very good. Awesome. So, is that the moment now, David, that we can see your trumpet and like students can um, see some techniques that you have? Yeah, absolutely. And I've got I've got two things I can maybe show, um, like obviously me being one of them. But uh, the other is a video that I did that I haven't released quite yet, but I think I can share it with everyone. Um, let me try to get everything set up here. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I just like set up my I just moved rooms in, in my house. So my studio is still a little set up. So I'm gonna be using my, my I'm sorry, my computer microphone. Uh, but uh, let's see. 
Ghost and Lightning here as well. There we go. Hello. Hey, awesome. Hi. <laughs> um, so maybe I'll just play and then if you have questions. That okay. would be great. Awesome. Um, so I guess before I'll say anything, the, the one thing that I really uh, have been enjoying to discover on the trumpet is this thing called a split tone. I kind of uh, introduced it and explored it uh, throughout this. And uh, not to get extremely technical about it, but um, if my lips are buzzing to create the sound, they're buzzing together to make the sound. Well, if I take the, the, the parameter of the lips buzzing together, what if I do them independently? And by doing this, I can get two buzzes and create two pitches. Is the one that I'm playing, and the one that you'll hear is from the double buzz. Split tone. So if I play it again, and what happens is uh, you can hear when I get out of tune. And what happens is uh, one note is staying somewhat similar while the other one is detuning, and then you're getting these out of tune beatings with my lips. Or very nice sounding interviews. And so this is something that the trumpet shouldn't be able to do normally. And it isn't a normal technique, but it is becoming a more standard extended technique. Uh, to go from that point and think about the lips as a parameter. The other thing I think about is this uh, sound, this technique called 
electric birds, which is similar to how split tones are happening. Like all, all the techniques right now that I'm going to talk about come from this idea of control of the lips. And it's a very small precision that needs to happen, but it just sounds very, very high and uh, beautiful. So maybe I'll do some electric birds. Is that electric birds or electric birds? Electric. Is that, if we work together, it was a sound, different sound to it. Is it the same thing or is it? You know, I think it's, it's the same. I think I became aware of this electric birds um, terminology. But uh, I think, yeah, we came up with a name for it. Cool. Very, very soft. Very, very soft. But it just sounds like I have the birds outside singing too. But it just sounds like them. It just sounds like I'm playing with them. And um, yeah, it, it, and it, Nassim uh, composed a piece for two friends and I and uh, used this vocabulary for all of us really well. And we wound up forming a trio from it. But th this is one of the things that um, sculpturally and compositionally and te textually really worked well in the piece. If I'm going to go one farther from that on the other end, if, that, if split tones are the middle, electric birds are the top that are very quiet and pretty, what's on the other end of the spectrum? And that's like a, what I call extreme noise. I don't know if it has a name. I've been looking. People do it, but I don't know. And, uh, well, here it is. that you can do with this right? and I think the trumpet is fortunate that um, it was also very exciting that we could also do the like transition between extreme noise to bird sound and then it's like two opposite directions of the range like highest and lowest and they can also do the transition yeah and, and that's the beautiful thing is like how we how performers and composers interweave this, right? Mm. Um, you know, I think that's one great thing. And then I think the other thing, too, that's beautiful about brass is, is mutes. So we have these mutes that allow us extra sounds. And so utilizing them, in a normal way is good, but also in a... non-traditional ways. And not that that's as crazy as the extreme noise sound, really. but utilizing the, the mutes uh, brings a whole new uh, set of colors to the table for brass instruments that I, I personally really love. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do one quicker one, Nassim, and then I can even show something. That's yeah, you also just did tongue ram. Could you also give a short about that, that how fast can it be, like, 
-hmm. Maybe there is a, if there is a standard like range of speed for that. You know, that, that's like a, a by person thing, right? Because um, what we're talking about is tonguing, you know, ta, 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 tu, 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 in the trumpet, but without the lips buzzing, right? So if I, if I were to play a normal note, right? But now take the lips out of the equation as a parameter. And instead of having the lips vibrate, have the tongue smack the, the mouth. And the speed, I think, is determined by uh, how fast your trumpet player can tum. And I would say that uh, there's a technique uh, that's standard. It's called double turning and triple turning. And what I mean by that is trumpet players take uh, an idea, and when it becomes too difficult for a single type of tongue versus a, a ta or a tu, we change to a tuku or a tutuku. And let me, let me explain by example. That's all single tone. Here is double tone. Right, so I get, I get doubles. Now if I go one, one farther, in, I can do triples. And so I bring this up because double and triple tonguing a tongue ram is quite difficult. So you have to be um, cognizant of mechanical issues of the human instrument interface. Uh, and this is something that I think is always great when you are able to work with your performers, right? Um, because then you can troubleshoot these things. And this is going back to what I was saying earlier about Shockhouse. There's, there's videos of him saying in a rehearsal, oh, what you've done is beautiful. Uh, in fact, I have to put this in the score and give you credit for this because this is better than what I could have written. Right? And um, so it's, it's, it's finding and discovering those beautiful moments in music that are mutually uh, going on. Um, tongue rams, let's see. Um, at the beginning, I used microtones. And I did them in the same way that I had done uh, in the piece that I showed earlier, and that's by using the slides. And so trumpet has these slides. Um, why? Because trumpet is not a perfect instrument. So the tuning needs to be adjusted. And that's why we have these slides. But that also means that I can play with the tuning of certain notes. So let me give an example. This is a normal G, the normal fingering. If I were to play a G as an alternate fingering, I think this is going to raise the pitch almost a quarter tone. OK, this is very cool. But now, because I'm doing an alternate figure, the normal one is open, this one is one and three. By now alternating to one and three, by using the mechanics of the instrument, my knowledge and hackability of it, right? I know that the G is open or one and three. I can now say the, the one and three one is a little high, but I can use the slide to adjust it. step at that point. And I can, right, if I know my alternate fingers, my history of the instrument, I can find those areas that are perhaps the gray area of things. Now, um, do you have anything else that you have in mind specifically, Nassim? Um, anybody has any questions? 
um, or any idea that you want to try, this is the best moment. اگه ایده ای دارین میخواین همین الان با دیوید چک کنین خیلی فرصت عالی the culture of the music is finally getting into all these sounds and trumpet players are getting um, modifying in their instruments. So let me play this for you and uh, say that this is becoming more normal. quarter tone valve right here. So now what used to be finding the alternate fingerings for now it becomes right so now I have what what usually was two options for my C is now four. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's a beautiful thing and it's it's subtle in some ways. Right? And these alternate fingerings are um, things to continue to be explored. Awesome. Do you know any online website kind of resource that uh, students can go and check for that fingering so they can see like uh, a whole of them? Um, I'm sure there are, you know, let me, when I compile everything and send uh, like a package of all the materials, I'll, I'll see if I can find that and include it as well. And if not, I'll maybe write a little thing that kind of supplements um, the lack of me being able to find that. Awesome. But, um, yeah, uh, I don't know, maybe I, I, I don't know how much time is left. I don't want to um, take too much. We are six minutes past the time, but it all up to you all. <laughs> I would say, yeah, if you all have questions about what the trumpet can do, Nassim is right. Now is, now is definitely a time to take that. You, you have it. <laughs> yeah, Paymon okay. also has uh, some questions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is it possible to play some note like harmonics uh, on trumpet? So, yeah, let's give three of them together. So you had questions about harmonics, pizzicato. Yeah, uh, um, pizzicato sound like pizzicato. And uh, about the sordings that you use in your instrument. Is there ordinary shape of them or you can uh, make your individual type of that? Yeah, that sordings by itself is a like huge topic on its own. <laughs> This is, this is my bag of mutes. So uh, maybe we'll start with the more simple ones, right? This is a straight yeah. mute, right? And it sounds um, metallic in ways. And so without... And the way that you should be sonically hearing a mute in a way is that it's a filter for the frequencies of the sound and certain uh, is it have special name for it this one is a straight mute straight mute mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and uh so yeah, yes the thing is each uh um well each mute filters out specific sounds but if you notice this shape versus this shape, they're quite different. They're both straight mutes. And in fact, they're quite similar in height. But when you're looking for that right sound for the piece, you may have to go through three 
or four mutes, or five mutes before you find the right straight mute. Because each of these filters in a different way. And if we see just in, for instance, I know I've got a handful of mutes, this one is purely straight. This is the original straight mute. This design came to be to improve upon it. And there's so many different variants of it. So this is a thing that as you work with your performers, right, you will begin to uh, discover. Now, uh, one of my favorite mutes is the uh, Harmon mute, right? And it's, it's a great one because the stem can be pulled out. And if you've ever listened mm -hmm. to Miles Davis, this is how he plays. Harmon mute, no stem. The, the wonderful thing about this is you can get the, the vowel sounds through this mute. And mm -hmm. through using specific mutes, I actually just bought this one. Uh, so let me see, how many do I have here? No! No, oh, sorry. All these mutes, right? All these mutes, one, two. They're all similar but different. And they each do. And how do you know what the composer uh, want to use? Each one. So usually the composer writes in, in the score. Like, like for instance, um, in Stockhausen, there's a moment um, that he, he needs you to pull three different mutes and they're on a belt. You literally have to wear them on a belt here. Watch, I'll show you this belt. This belt is right around me. You can see, yeah? And this belt holds all the mutes so I can play them. Because the action that I have to take of, of motion on here, I found another straight mute. We lost your video. Yeah. Um, David, I uh, um, just got a, a small question. Um, can you also get sound by using just the mute? I think the hormone mute might be. Um, what do you mean by get sound? Like this, can it just make sound? playing on the mute. Oh, I mean, they have a pitch. <laughs> but they're all going to be very similar. <laughs> That was a lot too. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> have an orchestra of them. Yeah. <laughs> but that's going to be more expensive than trumpets, I think. So many mutes. Wow, it was really cool. We never tried it. Good question. Yeah. Um, so, does that answer the question about the mutes? Paymon? الان جواب سوالاتو گرفتی درباره میوت. And then uh, do you remember the other question? Sorry, I kind of like that. Uh, it was about pizzicato and harmonics. And I think then then after that we can end the meeting, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um let me just put this down. So uh, pizzicato, I think the closest thing that you're going to get is that tongue ring, without a doubt, mm -hmm. to me. And it's, and you get seven options. And then the thing to know is that the, the note that is being heard is, I think, a half step in the wrong direction. So. So it's a half step in down for like air or pizzicato notes. But I think the tongue ram is uh, the closest effect that you'll get. And this writing your articulations in a way that the musician knows, uh, this is a legato or staccato. That will give them enough mm -hmm. to play with the effect. And so it's 
You, do you mean that you have a wide range of possibilities just within the pizzicato action? I think there's uh, articulation that you can have, and it's it's subtle, right? It's And it, it's not a lot, you know, because we think about it, the tongue is going into the mouthpiece and, you know, it's basically doing this, right, for more or less. Mm -hmm. So it's something between like conventional and tongue ram. Say again, what was the second one? So it's something between ordinary and tongue ram. Yeah, no, I think it's more tongue ram. I think it's mm -hmm. more tongue ram. And um, really, I think the articulation is going to give the impression of how it should be done, because it's so um, minute as far as what, you, what you're going to get. That articulation is going to be the most important, I think. Mm. That's, that, that's what you're going to get. but. You won't get any length, right? You'll get resonance in the hall, but you won't get length. Uh, and uh, uh, does, does that uh, maybe, is that, that answers that one. I'll go on to the last question about kind of um, playing harmonies. Was that the question or playing harmonics? Yeah. So uh, yes and no, right? You need to work uh, with the performer or have, um, strategies in mind for this. And I say this because there's a few options, right? We can go back to what we did earlier, which is the split tones. And so you get these moving fourths for the most part. Um, and it, it's a little more complicated because of the partials and the harmonics, but uh, for the most part, yeah. That's one way to do it, but you're, you have finite control over that. And what I mean by that is that the mechanics of the trumpet are holding you back, right? You have to be, con you have to be creative within the constraints of the trumpet. And I say this because let's take E flat, which is the one that I've been doing it's always going to be D ah, and if I move mm -hmm. through the series of the trumpet uh -huh. on that fingering two and three, uh -huh. these no. these are all the notes that you're going to wind up getting through a split tone because of the way the mathematics works. They're fine ratio, yeah. three to two, but every combination has that. So if you can explore that, if you say, ah, okay, well, um, if we take A, for example, one and two combination, <laughs> that's the seven, and I can go, And now, going back earlier, I have microtonal functions over that. For harmonics, right, or harmonies, split tones have the constraint of the, the series. The other way, and this way you have to be cognizant of who you're writing for, whether it be a, a deep voice or a low voice or a high voice, is using multiphonics, uh, what trumpets call multiphonics, which is singing and playing. And maybe I'm not singing loud enough, but there's a, a, a control because of the voice. But that control, you know, having me sing a G above the staff 
isn't as easy for me as it would be for someone who has that range. So depending on the piece you're writing and depending on what it and you are asking of it, these are something to think about as far as harmonies because um, again, singing a, a high range as a man, that's not gonna happen for me. So I'm gonna have to rework the piece. But you can do that and you can do that in uh, addition to the split tone. <laughs> So we can get three notes. How loud and how audible those are, that's depending on how much air, how much, if there's amplification. Right? All of these things are um, dependent on their scenarios. So while it's possible, oh, sorry. Uh, the, the last thing, while it's possible, working with your performer in that specific case that's, that's something that's going to give you a lot of insight mm -hmm. to those why questions. We just got two more questions, which I think, um, so the question is that, how is the situation for the performers facing kind of music with rhythms like um, that sort of like complex rhythms? that the music sounds like a cloud, but the question is that how much accuracy is that like the performers will have? Is it like 100% accurate performance of those rhythmic gestures? I don't, I don't hear you, you need to unmute. Um, I think that's a very good question. And I think that's what, what is the intent of the piece, right? What is being asked of the piece of music um, to be played? Because look, let's go back to Carl Heinz, Schrockhausen. What he's asking on the page, you do exactly. And by doing that exactly, you will get the music because he's already heard it, right? Everything mm -hmm. has been dictated. The articulation, the dynamic, the range, the duration, it's all been programmed by mathematics. And then the, art, the artistry, the creativity takes that mathematics and makes it musical. But the execution in his music is expected that it, it is to be 100%. Um, whereas the first piece that I showed with the text score, that's interpretive. The thing that you have to do is think about the composer's music and how authentically can you embody that music, right? If the composer is writing it in a way that is absolutely impossible but pushing me, I should see how close to impossible I can get. And the best example I can give is a piece that I'm looking at right now. And by looking at, I mean also working on. And it's this piece by Taishan Sori. And it's called For Peter Evans. And Peter Evans is a, an incredible trumpet virtuoso. Um, listen to him. Please, for the sake of all trumpet players, do your best to not write like him, but right inspired by him. And I think Taishan has done a, a great um, uh, service to the trumpet world by writing this piece. But um, it's very complex. I'll just show a little brief moment of it. And, uh, you know, there's a recording. I'm not going to play it because I'm still working on it. But, but the moments I'll wor I'm working on right now are, I'll show this because I think this is great. It's uh, all right here, this line. And if you notice, we have fives and then we have threes over twos. And that took me a, quite a long time to just kind of wrap my head around, but it wasn't anything that I hadn't dreamt up in my musical world before, right? Going, Right, that that worked. Right, right, and but it's just programmed now. Right, I had to think about how do I do triplets and in, in duples. 
And it's the same thing. But once you wrap your head around it, then it becomes uh, a layer uh, of the music that you have to execute because you know it's now possible as a performer. Right? I know that now that I've counted this properly, regardless of the range, I can play it. Right? And I know I can play almost half of it pretty accurately. The other thing is what Taishan is asking here, which is a metronome marking of 132 or as quickly as possible, which I think the, the recording I've heard is around 90 or 100. So there's still room to see how far you can go. And when you listen to Peter play, that's exactly what this piece is for. Um, I think that answers the question about accuracy. Um, there was also a question about multiphonics, which I think uh, it's really like personal for the brass players. I'm, I'm not the best at it, I'll be honest. Uh, I'm working on it. Um, it's, um, yeah, multiphonics is, is uh, really just singing and playing and working with that balance, right? It's another parameter just as what tones are. Um, I've got a good friend, uh, Annie Lemieux, uh, who has a, a Twitch channel where she plays trumpet and kind of talks about what she's doing. And I think she's just an incredible uh, improviser for multiphonics. She's got a great ear. And maybe I'll include that in the document. Um, but also, you know, uh, uh, going back to, I think, an earlier point, Finding the musicians, right, and saying like, oh yeah, like what's that piece that has amazing multiphonics? And I would say, oh well, you know, I I, I think you know there's this in this piece, right, or this in this book that can help inform you. Um, I don't know. That definitely doesn't answer the question. I know that, but. Uh, Thanks it, so it is, much. It's personal, for sure. <laughs> um, and it would be great if you like um, could share the information that we talked. Like they can see that who were the um, people that you referred to today. Uh, or, or if we could just type in the names in the chat. I did as much as I could. <laughs> but... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Let me do that now then. Um, of course. Awesome. Or maybe would it be easier, Nassim, maybe what I can do is I can compile like a list and then send that with links. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, and then, um, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, hearing the final pieces. I think where you all are at is... Um, like a spectacular moment because you have like about one month, which is just about enough time to, yeah, exactly, feel on edge, uh, but also feel motivated to do this. Um, you know, it's that final push. It's the hardest, but I guarantee when you finish, you will feel so great about it. And um, uh, yeah, I can't wait and, um, I'm sure if you have questions, just reach out. Thank you so much. Awesome. That was a really great day. Thank <laughs> you so much. So I'm going to stop the recording now.